on guys, this is Craig Tech360. Today I'm going to show you how to install a rooftop wind turbine or a whirly bird. Alright guys, thank you for clicking on this video. Make sure you like and subscribe and let's get into it. So, this house was built in the mid 80s, I think uh, 86, if I'm, if I'm correct. I think that's when it was built. And it's a good size house, three bedroom, uh, no, no roof vents at all. Well, it's got one right over there. It's got one, uh, it's just a little 10 inch electric fan, and that thing runs all the time. So, to take some of the load off that little bitty fan, we're going to go ahead and install two of these 12 inch wind turbines. Now, this is over the garage since this seems to generate the most heat. I'm going to go ahead and install these first. I've already got one already installed, and now we're going to go ahead and install this one. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. All right, so these I picked up at Home Depot. Uh, if I'm correct, I believe I paid about 70 bucks a piece. Um, these are the black ones, um, just because it is a black roof, and we didn't want nothing standing out that much and being that noticeable. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, if you don't know the pitch of your roof, you're going to want to know the pitch of this roof when you go to make the adjustments on this turbine. So this comes with it inside the box. You'll need a flat, uh, you need just a you know, ruler or a uh, straight edge or a level, whichever one works best. Self-explanatory, roof peak. You're going to put that just like that and you're going to roll it just like this. And you're going to take your flat straight edge so just like this. Now, the bottom of this straight edge right here lines up on seven. So that means this is a seven pitch. So, so with that being the seven pitch, now we gotta make our adjustments to the Whirly Bird base. All right, so now we know it's a seven pitch. So right here on the base, it has bottom right there. I don't know if you can see it real well. And then there's a line right here, which has a screw hole. Now, so what you're gonna do is on this piece, which I'm not sure if you can see it, but there are numbers above each hole. And I'm looking for number seven. And I'm gonna take that number seven and I'm gonna put it and line it up right with that hole and that's right where it's gonna need to be. So let's go ahead and get that put in and tightened up and get the screws in and we'll get going. All right, got all three of them in there. So then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna kinda get a general idea of where you're gonna want this on your roof. Now, rule of thumb is, because I like to put the top of the beginning of this, this ring here, the top of this, about 14 inches down. So which I've put me probably right there, okay? And then, since I already have one, I can also kind of go off that one down there and kind of see where I'm at. And then I'm gonna take my screwdriver or pen, marker, chalk line, whatever you may have, and I'm gonna make a line. All right, so now that I got my hole kind of where I want, I want to kind of fill around. Okay, I'm gonna fill. I'm gonna fill them for studs. If there's a stud right here, right on the edge of this, so I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna scoot it this way just a little bit. I got my line made. Circle where I want to start your blade. With your sawzall that you're going to use, I got a one inch paddle bit. And I'm just going to take it, pop a hole. Just like that. Put a little hole in there. And what that'll do, that hole there, it'll allow room for your blade on your sawzall to go in. Once you got it cut, you got the hole put. Follow your line and cut your hole. I can almost just instantly feel that heat boiling out of there. All right, so once you get your hole popped, get this out. Now, the best way to do this, you want to go around, get something, go up under all this, get these shingles popped up, you know, all the way around, 
that allows the flange or the flashing to slide up under this. Okay. Now I usually usually use a flat bar, but I don't know where it went, so I'm using a mud knife. But it works just as good. You kind of just want to go in, in all the way around, make sure there's going to be no nails in your way. Yeah, there might be a nail there, but make sure there's no nails in your way, so when it slides right in, it fits perfect. Take it and get in front of these shingles that you just pulled up. Now your goal is not to really tear the shingle, but it'll be alright. I'll get it. Man, you just wanna take this. you're going to want to do is then you're going to want to turn and spin this until you level. So it's going to be about right. This is going to be right there. Now it is best to use a level when you're leveling this out but I don't have a level handy. So then with all the other stuff they give you now we're going to put this clip in, and this basically keeps this piece from spinning. All right. Now, before we put the top on, we are going to want to seal everything up. So I got some regular lock, Loctite roof and flashing. It works great. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go around this inside seam here. You want to seal all that up. You're going to want to seal this bottom seam up as well. And then screw holes, you know, nail holes, since I had to do this this way, since I kind of messed that shingle up, I had to nail it down that way. And then you want to cover any nails you have exposed. And then on the outside of this, you also want to uh, seal that as well. All right, now that it's all sealed up, let's go ahead and get the top on. So bring the top over here. And then obviously you're going to line these holes up. You got three bases right here, and you're going to line them up in these little grooves. Just like so. Then you're going to get the last three screws that come with it. And we're going to start putting them in. So. It's all bolted in give it a good little spin make sure it spins freely it's not hitting nothing not making any noises all right guys that is how you install the whirly birds now i know it may be a little kind of a rough install kind of a rough how-to i don't do these a lot so it's kind of relearning them as well because it's been years since i've installed these uh, but that is roughly that's how you do it i mean honestly if you know what you're doing and you know how to do it you've done it many times I mean, it'll probably take you 20 minutes, you know, 30 minutes tops each one. Uh, but being that you probably are newer, which is probably why you're here on this video, uh, it'll probably take you, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. Just kind of doing it slow, make sure you do it right. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. So, so if you have any questions, comments, make sure you comment below. Don't argue, don't fight. Until next time, guys.